course, I don't know why you'd want more velociraptors in the world, but nobody's asking me. What were we talking about? <laughs> it's all these birds. Hi, I'm Tiffany Vora, Principal Faculty in Medicine and Digital Biology, here for Ask an Expert, the show where we take your questions from the Twitter sphere about the topics we cover here at SU. <laughs> oh, I think I hear a tweet. So Luis Felipe Scolari writes, scientists report that ancient Mars harbored a form of nitrogen that could potentially, could potentially have been used by microbes to build key molecules. So this is really interesting because when we think about how do we find out whether there is life currently on another planet like Mars or someplace else, what's the signature that we're looking for? And so by looking at things like nitrogen molecules or other types of ratios of molecules, we're able to tell whether there is a signature that something alive was using that nitrogen to be alive. And so we're applying that type of idea to other planets where it's hard for us to go and actually look in the soil to see if we see any microbes. Instead, it's like we're looking for their fingerprints. We're already doing that right now on Mars with the rovers. So when we think about life on Mars, we're not thinking about little green men. Um, most people now think about bacteria living on Mars now or earlier. This is why we think a lot about whether there's water on Mars, because as far as we know, and of course we only know about life on Earth, life needs water. So that explains the emphasis on water for Mars research. Um, we think that there may have been bacteria present on the surface or deep underground, uh, places where there is water present, and possibly uh, could still be there. On Earth, there are environments that you wouldn't think life would be able to survive, like inside gold mines or at the North Pole or at the South Pole. In these dry valleys in Chile, there's all kinds of microbes that can live in incredible environments. If life on Earth can find a way in all those environments, then why not in another place like Mars? Oh, I hear another little bird. Ooh. Okay. John Bradshaw tweets, cat mummies from the vaults of the British Museum. Surprised that they smell of fragrant juniper from the embalming? I'm actually impressed that uh, John smelled something as good as fragrant juniper. When I worked with cat mummies, they smelled terrible, not like fragrant juniper at all. So cat mummies are very interesting because they're a source of ancient DNA that we have a lot of. Uh, the ancient Egyptians actually ran an industry of devotion where you could go to the temple and if you wanted your prayer heard by the gods, you would offer money and the priests would sacrifice a cat for you and then the cat would carry your prayer into the afterlife. Personally, I'm interested in ancient molecules because I think about not just what happened in the past, but how I would use that information in the future. So if I go to Mars, for example, and I'm looking for ancient life, let's say there's no life left, which would be a shame, but let's say we're looking for ancient life, well, I need to know before I get to Mars what I'm looking for and how I can handle the samples when I get there. And so cat mummies, uh, ancient humans, other types of uh, ancient fossils, amber fossilized insects, all of these things are kind of like sandboxes for playing with these old molecules, which we might need to do someplace more difficult, like Mars. Oh, look, a bird! Anthony Caradeo tweeted, do you guys really think we can put people on Mars by 2030? This one's easy. Yes, I think we can put people on Mars by 2030. So in uh, October 2016, both President Obama and Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, talked about how excited they were about putting people on Mars. I think this kind of partnership between government and private industry is really what's going to drive us home to get us off the Earth and to put us onto another planet. So as a digital biologist, I can think of a lot of things I could do to make us able to colonize Mars. We're focusing a lot more attention now, um, both as scientists and as a culture, on the bacteria that live on us and in us and around us. So instead of thinking about taking a nuclear reactor with me to Mars, what if I could create communities of bacteria that make fuel for me on Mars from the bacteria themselves? That would be great, might even be safer than nuclear power. So these types of engineering of bacterial communities could have really important implications for colonists on Mars. We can build building materials from bacteria. We can uh, tune human health with our microbiome. So how could we give the colonists and the astronauts the healthiest possible microbiomes to keep them from getting sick 
on their journey or while they're far away from help from Earth. Digital biology and the technologies and the applications from digital biology, I think, are going to be crucial for getting humans to Mars safely, bringing them back safely, and also living safely and happily on the Red Planet. Thanks for watching Ask an Expert. I'm Tiffany Vora. Check back next week for a new episode. Here's another video from SU. And don't forget to click here to subscribe. When I came back to the United States from Cairo, I started a company called Bionis Science, where I write and consult on scientific communication. Communicating the science we do is just as important as doing science, and that's something I'm really excited about. The best thing about cat mummies is they're delicious. Mm. I was gonna eat that mummy.